All right, I hope you've had a chance to have a look at the problem I set you. And in the first part, what we were trying to do was find the current IL, all right, that's the current in the circuit here, and the voltage VL, that's the voltage basically uh, across the load there, okay? So the voltage VL. All right, so let's do it together. So in order to find the current IL, we need to find the total impedance. The total impedance is ZT, and we're gonna say it's an easy circuit, it's a series circuit, so that's just a one plus J4, that's that. And then we've got a plus 39 uh, plus J26. So let's add the real bits together and the imaginary bits together. And that gives us what? It gives us a 40 plus a J30. All right. Okay. Now we need to convert that into its uh, polar representation. And so ZT then is equal to, that would be a 50 and my angle there is a 36.87. All right, so we now have ZT. All right, the current IL then, that current IL is really just equal to the voltage over here, which is 250 at an angle zero, and that's divided by the ZT, which is our 50 at an angle of what? 36.87, and so my current is equal to five, and my angle here is a minus 36.87, okay? All right, so that's IL. The voltage VL, okay, is really equal to what? It's really equal to the current times this impedance. And so we could say it is really 39 plus this J26, and that's multiplied by my current IL. All right, so if we look at this, let's convert this bit to its polar form. Converting that to its polar form gives me 46.87, and my angle is a 33.69. So that's the polar representation of this guy right here, this impedance right here, and that is multiplied by the IL, which is a five, and that's an angle of minus 36.87. All right. So if I multiply this out and deal with the angles, then I get my voltage VL as being equal to 234 and or actually 234.35, and my angle here is a minus 3.18 degrees. So that is VL. All right, part B, uh, we were to find the reactive power in the load, the real power in the load, and the apparent power in the load. And of course, this is just taken over from the previous page. You know, there's my current IL, which we just found, and there's the voltage VL, which we just found as well. All right, let's do the apparent power first. And we can say that the apparent power S in the load, I'll put a designator to indicate that, is really equal to IL, it's the complex conjugate of IL, multiplied by VL. So if we work this out, what do we actually have? Well, we have IL, which is five. My angle there, of course, changes to a 36.87 because it's the complex conjugate. And then that is multiplied by VL, which is 234.35. And my angle there is a minus 3.18, all right? So let's uh, multiply that out and once again deal with the angles there. And if we do that, we have the apparent power in the load being equal to, this is 171.75, that's volt amps. And my angle over here is going to be a 33.69. 33 okay. Now, in order to find uh, the uh, real power and the reactive power, I can form a little power triangle. And uh, so let's do that. So our little power triangle is going to look like this. So we've got our real power in the load. We've got our reactive power in the load. 
And there, of course, is my apparent power in the load. Okay, and this angle over here is what? It is this 33.69. And so we can say then that the real power in the load is simply equal to what? It's equal to this 171.75 multiplied by the cosine of that angle, which is 33.69. And if we work that out, this is equal to 974.95 watts, and that's our, that's our real power. All right, so we can now do the same thing for the uh, reactive power in the load, QL, that is equal to the 1, 171.75 times the sine of this angle, 33.69. And if we work that out, that is equal to 650, and this would be volt amp reactive. Part C is to find the reactive power in the line, the real power in the line, and the apparent power in the line. There are a couple of ways we can do this. Um, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that voltage VL, okay? I know the current IL, so I'm going to find VL. One way to do this is to simply use Kirchhoff's voltage law. I mean, effectively, you're just taking a loop and saying that VL is really equal to this 250, angle zero, minus this VL voltage over here. And so if we do that, we can say that the voltage across the line, uh, maybe I shouldn't call that, I call that V line, I think, to differentiate it from that. So the voltage across the line, V line, is really equal to what? It's equal to this 250, angle zero, minus the voltage across the load, VL. Okay, so what is that? Um, that's going to be equal to 250, angle zero, and that's minus, well, what is that thing? Well, that was, we worked it out before, this is 234.35 at an angle of, what, minus 3.18, okay? Well, what have we got to do here? If I'm going to sort of perform this operation, I need to convert this guy here, I need to really convert it to what? Rectangular form. So I need to really convert that to rectangular form. So if I do that, I get the line voltage is 250, okay? Um, and of course that's just real because the angle is zero. And then I've got a minus, I'll open up a bracket here, converting this guy to rectangular, I had what? 234, and it's a minus J, 13. Okay, all right, so I can now expand the bracket out and I get that my line voltage is really equal to what? It's equal to basically 16 plus a J13. All right, and if I now convert that to its polar representation, that gives me a 20.62 at an angle of 39, okay? And so that represents basically my line voltage. So I can now calculate the apparent power in the line, okay? And that is gonna be equal to, what is it? It's going to be equal to the line voltage, which is a 20.62, angle 39. And that is gonna be multiplied by the current IL, but it's the complex conjugate of that current, which is of course that five, and my angle was 36.87, all right? And so if I work that out, I get that the apparent power, as far as the line is concerned, is going to be equal to 103.1 volt amps, and my angle there, adding these two together, comes out to be 75.87. All right, so now having the apparent power and the correct angle, 
which means I've got really the power factor, I can say that the real power in the line is simply equal to what? 103.1 multiplied by the cosine of this 75.87, which gives me what? That gives me 25.17 watts. And then my reactive power in the line is going to be equal to the 103.1 times the sine of that 75.87 and that gives me 99.98, and what have I got there? Volt, amps, reactive. Okay, look, another way you could have done that, of course, is you could have used your relationship knowing the current, knowing the impedances here. You could have used that I squared approach. So in part D, we were going to find, or asked to find what the reactive power supplied by the sources, what the real power supplied by the sources, and what the apparent power supplied by the sources. Now we know what the source voltage is, it's 250, angle zero. We've found the basic uh, current in the circuit IL, which is five at an angle of minus 36.87. So we can say that the apparent power from the source is what? It's really equal to the 250 at an angle zero, multiply by the complex conjugate of IL, which of course is that five, and my angle there is going to be 36.87. All right, so if we work this out, we get that the apparent power is equal to 1250, and this would be volt amps, and my angle over here would be what? It would be a 30, 36.87, so, Knowing the angle relationship, the power factor here, the cosine of that, we can find the other two quantities. So we can say that the real power from the source, or provided by the source, is equal to, it's going to be this 1250, and that's multiplied by the cosine of this angle, 36.87, and that is equal to 1000 watts. Okay, and then the reactive power supplied by the source is going to be equal to that 1250 multiplied by the sine really of that angle which is 36.87 and that is equal to 750 and this would be volt amps reactive. Look, just as an additional note here, um, I've got information about the line, I've got information about the source. And so if we're talking about, let's say, the real power, so this is my real power. My real power in the line, we can say was what? Well, we can say that's what, 25. And my real power in the load, so I'll write that down, power in the load, we can say that that was equal to 975 watts. Now, can I add these guys together? Well, yes, I can. And so I can say that if I take these two together, the power then provided by the source would be the power dissipation in the line, which would be the 25, plus the power dissipation in the load, which would be 975, which of course is equal to the thousand watts, which we had calculated before, okay? That's for my real power. Well, my reactive power, all right, let's have a look at this guy. My reactive power, okay? So if I look at the reactive power in the line, so reactive power in the line, what was that equal to? Well, that was equal to, I think it was 100, wasn't it? Yep. And my reactive power in the load, well, we said that that was equal to, what, 650. And can I add these guys together? Well, they're both positive numbers. So yes, we can. And so we can say that the reactive power provided by the source would be equal to 100 plus that 650, which of course gives us, what, 
it gives us a 750, okay? 750 volt amps reactive. Fair enough. Now, what about the apparent power? Okay, apparent power. Can I simply look at the apparent power in the line and the apparent power in the load and simply add them up? Well, no, I can't because they're vector quantities, okay? And so what I actually have to do then is I have to write them down really as vectors. And so I can say the apparent power of the source then is going to be equal to, well, it's the apparent power of the load, which we could say was 1, uh, 171.75, and there's an angle there, and that angle is what? 33.69, and then that is plus the 103.1, which is reactive power associated with the line, at an angle of, we said that was 75.87. So you have to note that these are vector quantities, okay? So now we have to really have a rectangular representation of these two quantities here. And then we can add up the real bits and the imaginary bits, and then we can finally work out what the apparent power provided by the source is, and then compare that to what we found on the, on the previous page. All right, so let's do this. We're going to make, we're going to actually convert this to its rectangular and convert this to its rectangular. So if we do this, we have this being equal to 975, and that's plus a J650. That's that bit. Plus this guy over here, which would be 25.169. Uh, plus a J 100, okay? And if we add the real bits together and the imaginary bits, we get, what do we get? We get 1,000.169 plus a J 750. And of course, there is some rounding error that's been introduced here. And so we can say that this is going to be equal to 1250 in its polar form, and my angle there is 36.86. And now you can compare that with what we had done on the previous page.